Hi, this is Steve. We're going to give everybody just a couple more minutes to log in, and then we're going to begin. And Hello. I just want, and you guys are all unmuted, so I just want to make sure you can hear me okay with no problems. I can hear you fine. This is Sandy Cole. Excellent. And what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to leave you unmuted, and you have um, a control that will allow you to mute and unmute yourself so that if you do have any questions, feel free to ask them. Okay, great. Okay. So yep. what we can do is we can go ahead and begin, and let me make sure you can see my screen, correct? Yes, I can. Okay, excellent. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn you up a little bit because I'm having tough time hearing you. And what I've done is I've already just logged in. Uh, what it is is if I log out real quick, you're going to see we have our main login page. What we do is we update you with any uh, pending information down here in our information section. But of course, to log in, you just use your username and password. And we're going to log right in, and we're taken to our master home page, which is showing me, as of right now, my schedule. What we're going to do uh, in this webinar is we're going to look at our e-prescribing system. We're going to focus on e-prescribing, but of course, in order to access e-prescribe, we've got to actually go through the EHR to get to the e-prescribing points. So um, of course, that's why when you log in, you're looking at your home page, showing you any things, any appointments that may have been scheduled. Here we are at 1 p.m. And of course, I've already gone ahead and used my appointment scheduler to put a patient on the schedule, but we don't necessarily have to put a patient on the schedule. If we wanted to, um, and we were using this as a standalone e-prescribing system, I could come in to my search patients and start typing in a patient's name and find the patient that I want to work with in order to do an e-prescription. So I typed in part of her name. And I've narrowed it down to Mae Walsh. So I'll go ahead and just click on her name. Doing so is taking me into a patient summary showing me any active allergies, active diagnoses, active medications. And of course, because this is the first time I'm working with this patient, there's no data found. As we use our e-prescribing system to populate allergies and populate medications, those allergies and medications will be listed on our summary page. Of course, our summary page is only going to show us the active allergies and the active medications. I'll go ahead and click on my progress note. You'll notice we can create a new one. It's got a little plus sign, and you'll notice in throughout our system we do have the consistency of any time we can create a new one, we're going to have a little plus sign for add. Once I do that, I'm taken into my patient's progress note, and this is a completely customizable note. And what I have done, because I'm only interested in e-prescribing, is I've turned off all of my progress note elements except the elements that are relevant for e-prescribing. Those elements being active allergies, active medications, and then, of course, down here in my uh, plan section, I'm going to have my managed prescriptions. So if we were doing May Walsh, and it was our first time entering her into our system, into our e-prescribing system, what we want to start with is entering her active allergies. So I'm going to click on the Manage Allergy link, and this is going to go through our single sign-on into our e-prescribing component. First thing I'm going to notice is I don't have a zip code entered for this patient, and so it's letting me know my insurance eligibility may fail. We are tied in with the SureScripts uh, e-prescribing system, and as such, it can identify patients who already exist in the SureScripts system based off of their name, gender, and zip code, and date of birth. 
And so what would happen is if this patient were part of a insurance plan with the formulary, we would have formulary information. If SureScripts identified her as being part of a mail order pharmacy, we would have mail order pharmacy information as well. Um, in this case, I don't have uh, the zip code entered for this patient, so I'm getting an insurance eligibility may fail um, notice, notification. I'm just going to ignore it for now. First thing we want to do is add an allergy. And so, of course, we could just say this patient has no known drug allergies, and that would be a simple click on the indicate no known drug allergy link located right here. Or I could use my common allergies and come down through my list of allergies available to me and select the allergy that I want to denote she's allergic to. Maybe she's allergic to the penicillins. And we can add that common allergy using the Add Common Allergy button. And now we're going to use our drop-down to indicate what type of reaction the patient has. Maybe the patient has a rash. And maybe we can also indicate that she experiences swelling. So you'll notice for my primary reaction type, I was able to choose from my drop-down but when I want to add multiple, I can always add free text. If we know the onset date, we can enter the onset date. And maybe she's been allergic to it since the summertime, you know, in 2006. Filling out that information, I can now add that allergy. And we're going to see that it's now added it to my active and current allergies. If I use my link up top here in the right hand corner to return to our EMR and go back to the progress note, we're going to be redirected. We're going to see a little refresh indicator happening. And in a second or two, my allergy is going to come across to my progress note. You'll notice I also have an MU or meaningful use icon. And that meaningful use icon has now switched from a blue pending icon to a green completed icon, indicating that I am now part fulfilling the meaningful use aspect of maintaining an active allergy list. This allergy is now at, added to my active allergies, and each time I open a new progress note for this patient, I'm going to see this penicillins group allergy listed. If you recall a little while ago, we were looking at that patient summary page. And when we look at the patient summary page, we are also going to see that penicillins group listed here as one of our active allergies. I'm going to jump right back to my progress note. We'll see here's our active allergy we just added. And the next thing we may want to do is manage medications. These would be the medications that the patient is currently taking. And to do that, we can click into Manage Medications. Again, we are coming into our e-prescribing portal. And the first thing it's asking me now is, you have not entered a pharmacy for this patient. And we need to enter that pharmacy. Maybe we don't know the pharmacy information yet. We just want to manage the medications. So up here in our blue title bar, we can click on Manage Meds. Again, this is where we are going to add the medications that this patient is currently taking. These could be medications we prescribed last week with paper or last month with paper or you know, that the patient's been taking for years and years. Uh, what we want to do, of course, is have an electronic record of that. And by having the electronic record, the e-prescribed system would then be able to provide us with drug-drug interactions. By adding the allergy, we'll be able to get drug-allergy interaction. And by adding any medications the patient is currently taken, we'll get drug-drug interactions. So let's go ahead and add a medication. We'll look up Zoloft. We'll find it. 
we'll select the SIG. We may not know the exact SIG that the patient is taking, and we may not even know when the patient started this medication. We can simply just click Continue and add that medication as an active medication. Again, this is a medication the patient is currently taking. I've got a question for you. So sure. the vendors that um, made easy deals with is what SureScript and Doctors First. Um, correct. So so we use Doctor First for our e-prescribing portal, and Doctor First is a SureScript Gold uh -huh. uh, associate. So we are able through our single sign-on, as you saw, by simply clicking these links on. Clicking these links on your um, progress note, you kind of seamlessly go through and seamlessly um, get into Doctor First without even realizing you're entering another system. Okay, I got ya. We actually have some other people on the call. I'm going to go ahead and. Un so um, we were at the point where we were where we were adding our active um, medications, and what we were what we were able to do through our active medications page was enter the medications that the patient is currently taking um, as as far as a history. What that actually allows you to do within the practice is it allows you to. Um, create a division of labor, and we've seen this in a lot of the practices that we work with. When a patient first gets scheduled, and it's the, the practice's first time inputting them into an EHR, into our EHR, they'll enter the patient demographics page. They will then have, and this won't necessarily be the doctor, this will be the office staff. And the office staff will open the progress note on the behalf of the doctor, go into the allergies, enter the active allergies based off of what the paper chart lists, and then enter the active medications based off of what the paper chart lists, and then leave that visit open. The doctor can now come in, or when the patient arrives, they may come into the progress note, and depending on how much of the progress note they have turned on, they could enter the vitals. The doctor that could then come in using the same progress note, the electronic progress note, enter the encounter information, and then the doctor does the prescribing. So what we're able to do up until this point is actually create a division of labor, where the office staff is using their single sign-on to enter patient history, and the doctor only needs to use the doctor first or the e-prescribing portal to enter current prescriptions that need to be prescribed based off of this encounter. Okay, so returning to our managed meds area of our of our e-prescribing portal. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add another prescription. And in this case, what we are able to do is we're able to actually um, find a prescription, and let's say it is an, an over-the-counter prescription, but we can actually put in the actual SIG, how much they're taking, apply one, uh, you know, liberally to affected area, you know, twice a day as needed, right? And then how long we want them to take it, maybe for 14 days. One, two. We could say when that prescription was started, maybe it was started at the end of last month. and we can just click continue and now we're going to not only add the prescription but we're adding the prescription along with the SIG to that prescription. When we return to the EMR 
and we give our EMR that opportunity to refresh because the two systems are, talk, are speaking to each other back and forth, we're now going to notice that our active allergies is going to, or our active medications is going to refresh and we're going to see the two medications that we have added, one without the dosage and one with the dosage. So again, I'll pause here and let you guys ask any questions that you may have. And the final thing that we're going to look at through our progress note is the actual prescribing of the medication. And of course, to do the actual prescribing of the medication, we are going to come down to our plan area. And in our plan area, we're going to see Manage Rx. I'm going to click on the Manage Rx. And again, now we're coming through our portal to our e-prescribing system. And now we are going to want to list the pharmacy that the patient is actually going to. It's at this point of the actual prescription that the doctor will be doing this. And so the doctor may actually be there with the patient and say, where are you going to go to pick this item up? The patient may say, well, I'm going to pick this up from the CVS close to my home. So we'll put in that patient zip code. We'll click find, and we're going to find all the pharmacies close to that patient. We can now come through and we can find that CVS. Here it is. And say, are you sure you're going to this one? Yes, I am. Excellent. We'll click on it. And now it's going to associate for Mae Walsh that she goes to the CVS pharmacy. If we want to add multiple pharmacies, we can add multiple pharmacies, and those pharmacies will be listed in a drop-down. So the next time this patient comes, if she says, well, I'm going to go to the Walgreens close to work, I'm going to work after this encounter, we can send the prescription to the correct pharmacy so that it's waiting for her at that pharmacy on her way to work. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually start typing in our prescription. And in this case, we could do something, let's say, like amoxicillin. We just type in any part of the word, and we're going to find any um, medication that matches that part of the word that we typed in. We find our amoxicillin, we click on our prescription strength, and you're going to notice the first thing we get is an allergy alert. We see what the reaction type is, and of course this alert is based off of the allergy we just entered. The other alert we're going to get is a geriatric precaution alert based off of the patient's age, we're being told that the patient's over 65 and using amoxicillin should be evaluated carefully. As far as the allergy, we can put in a justification of why we're prescribing this. And we can prescribe anyways. Prescribing anyway is now going to take us to the SIG page. Because I have used this medication in the past, my SIG is already populated with my previous, uh, my previous SIG information. Maybe for this patient, I'm going to change it up a little bit. So I want to change it to take two capsules by mouth three times a day. Instead of 14 days, maybe we're only going to do it for seven days. And um, therefore, we only need to do 14 or no, we'll have to do a few more than that. Maybe if we do seven again, it would calculate it for us. So 42 of them. So it had calculated for us. You're going to notice that 
our justification for prescribing this is already populated in our directions to pharmacists so that if the pharmacist knows that this patient is allergic to uh, the penicillins group, the pharmacist will see the instruction from the provider. Substitution permitted or dispenses written. And then finally, we just click continue. Doing so is going to show us a sample of what the prescription label will look like with the prescription, the duration, uh, substitution permitted, and of course the notes to the pharmacist. We can click OK. And now we're going to see this medication has been listed as one of our pending prescriptions for the patient. This prescription has not been sent yet until we, the provider, sign the prescription and send it over to the pharmacy. So each provider has their own um, signature password. They enter that signature password and they click send. And that is what performs the actual transmission process in that prescription is now being electronically sent over to the pharmacy and at the longest it takes 30 seconds for the pharmacy to receive that electronic um, prescription. If I click on my return to the EMR and we return to our progress note and give our progress note the few seconds it takes to refresh We are now going to see that our amoxicillin prescription has been listed under our prescriptions area. It is not yet listed under our active medications area. The next time this patient comes back, and of course provided that that patient comes back within the next seven days while this prescription is still an active prescription, it will show up under our active medications. Once that prescription, um, the seven-day period that we prescribed it for, has completed, it will no longer show up as an active medication, but we can always access that we had prescribed it in the past under our chart links under medications. It would be listed as an inactive medication. So we are keeping a history for you of the medications that you have prescribed in the past which ones are currently active are displayed to you automatically. The ones that are no longer active, are, there's still a history of it. It's just um, you have to go and physically look it up. Once we've completed our prescribing, we just sign off on that note. And that closes out this encounter for the patient. We get a preview. We can always print out our progress note, if we're still doing a paper chart, we just want to adopt e-prescribing. We can print out this paper um, medication allergy um, history list and put it in our patient chart, or we can always just close it out because that information is always available to us in our electronic system by clicking under our chart links on our past notes. Doing so is going to show us the encounter we just entered and we are going to see that in that encounter we entered the allergy, we entered the medication history, and we entered the medications. If we were to create a new encounter for this patient as of right now, or even looking at it right now from our patient summary, what we're going to see is the amoxicillin that we just prescribed is now listed as an active medication. Right here we see our active medications and we'll see the amoxicillin we just prescribed is considered an active medication. Now the reason we went through the e-prescribing and not the complete EHR is because we find that the e-prescribing is the first step 
that a provider or a practice should take when implementing a complete EHR, especially when that practice is implementing a complete EHR for meaningful use. E-prescribing knocks out about 50% of meaningful use. Through e-prescribing, we're fulfilling the meaningful use element or objective of maintaining an allergy list. We're fulfilling the active medication list. We're fulfilling um, the requirements for drug-drug allergy interaction and the requirement for drug yeah, drug, drug, and drug allergy inf interactions. Using e-prescribing also takes care of CPOE, computerized physician order entry. And, of course, it takes care of the complete e-prescribing requirement. The other thing that doing e-prescribing will accomplish um, outside of meaningful use for um, an eligible provider in that eligible eligible Medicare Part B provider is if that provider reports 10 uses of their e-prescribing system before June the 30th and reporting being includes a G code um, includes a G code on their claim form to CMS they will not be penalized in the year 2012 that penalty is a 1% penalty, and if the, um, if the provider reports that they use their e-prescribing system, they will not be penalized in 2012. If they do not use an e-prescribing system, there will be a 1% penalty on all Medicare Part B claims filed um, over the 2012 year. So again, I'm going to pause and ask if there's any questions. And your silence is promising. <laughs> Hi, Steve. It's Sandy. Can you hear me? Yes, Sandy. I can hear you. Okay. Question for you. Sure. Um, E-Health e -health Made Easy does, I mean, we're, look, we're looking in the, um, the standard screen, but are you going to walk through actually the encounter screen itself, or was this webinar only for the e-prescribing portion? This webinar was only for the e-prescribing. Of course, if you'd like for me to, I can, I can easily do it. All I have to do is come to my settings. I can manage my progress note. And through my manage progress note, you're going to notice I can turn on all these elements of my progress note. You're going to notice my meaningful use elements each have a meaningful use icon. But I can always turn on, let's say, everything in my progress note. Okay? I've oh, now activated yes, like everything that. in my progress note. And now, watch, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to my recent patients. And you're going to notice that May is now at the top of my list. Let's go ahead and click on May again. We're taken to that patient summary where we see all the information we've just entered. When I click on my progress note, and of course, this would be the next, we'll call it the next logical step. After your practice has implemented e-prescribing and are comfortable using an electronic system, they could now turn on the rest of the EHR. And you're going to notice that my progress note has now completely changed. I see my encounter reason. I see my vitals. I see my active allergies, which we saw before. But now we have a chief complaint, a history of present illness, a review of systems, past medical history, past surgical history, hospitalizations. Here are our active medications, our family history, our social history, um, physical exam, assessment, plan. There's our prescribing area, our comments, 
patient tasks, and finally confidential notes. You're going, and here's patient education. You'll also notice that each item that's a meaningful use icon, uh, meaningful use element has a meaningful use icon next to it. If we perform wow. the meaningful use step, such as educational resources were provided to the patient, and I say that I did it, my icon switches to the green check. As we come back up to the top as an example, here's my smoking status. If I determine that she is a current everyday smoker, my meaningful use is accomplished. Coming back to the top, I'm maintaining an active medication list, so my meaningful use is already accomplished. Coming back, coming back, coming back, here we have our vitals. You're going to notice that keeping track of the blood pressure is meaningful use. Weight and height are meaningful use so that we can calculate a BMI. Maintaining that BMI information also meaningful use. Okay. Okay. So, yes, yes. so, so what, what we try to do and, and what we really try to stress is let's, let's start small and let's, let's get comfortable integrating an electronic system into our current workflow prior to just making one big switch over. Let's kind of have a little bit of overlap time where we are just doing e-prescribing with our paper-based workflow. Then we can implement more and more and more features for meaningful use into our daily lives until finally we're no longer using paper charts and we are using only the EHR. What we find that that does for the practice is it really helps to minimize the slowdown and they, they can maintain the same amount of, we'll call it patient throughput, that they have been doing in the past. They don't have to drop it from, let's say, 20 patients a day to 10 patients a day. They can maintain their current patient load while getting comfortable integrating a computerized system in their office. And like we said, what it also does is it introduces them to some of the aspects of meaningful use. And of course, those aspects of meaningful use being the aspects that you kind of, you kind of have to opt into participating into them. Whereas there are certain items, let's say, like CCR export, right? Well, you're going to get CCR export for free from the EHR. Privacy and security, you're getting that free simply by adopting the EHR. You don't have to opt into actually using it. You get it for free. But something like maintaining vital signs, that's something you have to physically do in the EHR maintaining that allergy list, something you physically have to do in the EHR in order to get it into the EHR. So what we're, what we're helping you do is learn about opting into participating in meaningful use. Any other questions? Anything? Any other things you'd like for me to review? You know what we can look at real quick in in now what we'll what we'll do is we'll talk about ways to um, further speed up the prescription process because obviously you know, implementing this can be a giant headache and, and fairly burdensome. What we can always do through the e-prescribing system, and I'm just clicking on it now in order to go through the single sign-on, get back into our e-prescribing, 
what you're going to notice is I do have favorites listed. As a provider, I can preset favorite prescriptions. And I can have a drop down of my favorite prescriptions, which are the items I'm regularly, um, regularly prescribing. And what that can do, along with the SIG, and what that can allow me to do is just select the item, hit use, and without having to go through that whole process of entering the SIG information, I get my geriatric precaution. I'll prescribe it anyways. And without having to do any of the SIG information, it goes straight to my pending prescriptions area. All I have to do is sign off on it and send it out, and that goes off to the pharmacy. So as you, you know, so obviously there, there's a bit of a curve, and as you continue to use your e-prescribed system and get more and more comfortable with it and exercise all the features that it has available to you, you can make e-prescribing such a quick process uh, that it really does not interfere with your daily practice life. Return to the EMR. And of course, here we're going to see that that medication now pops up on my prescription list with the SIG and everything. The other thing that we've done to help you guys out, of course, to just to refresh memories and, and kind of go over what we've gone over today, is we have created YouTube videos. And we do have a YouTube channel, so if you go to YouTube and you type eHealth Made Easy into the search, if we spell it right, you'll get taken to our YouTube channel where we do have a description of our e-prescribing module. And so just in summary, what we've gone over today is e-prescribing, using our EHR and our progress note uh, by limiting the progress note elements to only um, cover the e-prescribe aspects as our initial step into using a complete EHR, learning how we can do um, previous medications, current allergies, as well as our prescriptions. And then once we get comfortable with that, how we can start implementing the complete EHR in order to perform meaningful use. And I'll just open it up for questions one more time, see if you guys have any questions. Thank you. Okay. Well, I do appreciate your time. And, of course, if you do have any questions, um, if you want to go over anything again, feel free to let me know. My number is right here in the bottom corner of the page, 1-877-394-7774. My direct extension is extension 5. And, again, my name is Steve, and you're welcome to call me and we can go over it as many times as you need. Okay, thank you very much. Sure, I hope you have a great afternoon. You too, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.